My name is Cindy Lin. I was born and raised in Taiwan. My name is Crystal Kong. Actually, I was born in China mainland for sure. My name is Grace. You can see I'm typical Chinese. We are more um, rebellious. We want to really play hard. Well, we also see the value of working hard. We feel like our parent generation, they probably only know to work hard. Because you are the girl, right? You don't need to do a lot of things. <laughs> You're the only one child. I want you to be with me. You don't need to go out to, to find everything. You just be with me. If the business is only having money, I don't want to live. Mm. But if the business has no money, I couldn't live. Hello and welcome to this edition of Crossover. I'm Ji Xiaojun. Hello from Beijing. I'm Louisa Li. And today we'll be continuing our discussion about Generation X. Yes, indeed. We're exploring the mindsets and the viewpoints of the people of this generation. We're now in a studio full of ladies. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and we're having a really heated discussion about this generation. It's not the same idea of Generation X that you might have in, in the West, but we do have a certain group of people in, in this area, in the re region, maybe, okay, we can also refer to that as, uh, as Generation S, mm -hmm. X, as we've been experiencing all these social and economic mm -hmm. changes happening here in China. Um, let's get down now to business, real <laughs> business. Let's get down to specifics. When we talk about this generation, we might have different ideas about this this topic. Money management. It's known to the whole world that Chinese people love to save money. To save. And they're good at it. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not good at what it What is at good all. and what is not? Um, Basically, you have make a plan or how, how much, what is the percentage I, I, I of the salary? I think from an article I read, it was 38%. They, they save 38% Chinese people. How much do you save? I save maybe 5%. <laughs> so I'm below the bar. That's the American style, right? Yeah. In, in America, it's about do you save, 3 4 Do you save 38%? Yeah, I don't know. You know. So uh, the saving rate is pretty much like 38%, uh, you're mm -hmm. right, with Chinese society, and 3 4% with Americans, and even less with Japanese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm quite surprised with that data. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. With mm. Japanese. Yeah, because, you know, living expense is very expensive in Japan, I'm, so, I'm assuming. Mm. Mm. Do you, do you, question number one, do you come from a family with the tradition of saving up a lot? And do you, question number two, do you do the same? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember when yeah. I was growing up, my grandfather had this bag of toilet paper oh. that turned yellow. He didn't even... Not only saving up currencies. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's important. Even paper. Even, even toilet paper. Because I, I guess back then in his generation, maybe it was so scarce that... Came from difficult times. Mm. Totally. And so he didn't even... He felt even bad to use paper. I, I actually don't know how he went to the bathroom. <laughs> but he, said he, would, he would even save paper. And so that's how I was growing up with my, my grandparents. And my parents were also very frugal, but they were already a bit more open about money. Mm. I was told, I remember my mom always remind me, um, you can save everything else, but do not save on your food. Meaning mm. when I'm in school, mm. she wants me to have proper nutrition, mm. right? So she reminds me, do not be too thrifty. Mm. I have grown up being or knowing um, the, the importance of saving money. So, same practice? Totally same practice. Mm. I, 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 I'm not a big spender at all. I'm wearing a 30-year watch. This is probably more than seven, eight years old. All my stuff is... From your uh, grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Being but safe. I, I, don't, I don't spend much at all. It also affects your spending habits, right? Basically. I mean, yes. It doesn't really matter how high the, uh, your, your bank account number is, but you know, you will still have a second thought when you... I think it's probably why I left the, consum the consumer packaged goods company uh, or industry is because I'm actually not big on consumption. Right. Um, but spending to us is different. Spending on ourselves is one thing, but making donations is a completely different mm. thing. So I was brought up in a very generous family where we always make sure that we donate a lot of money. Mm. So it's completely two different things, but we're, we are a very frugal family. Right. Mm. Big silver, my, my parents. Yeah. yeah. It's crystal clear. <laughs> <laughs> Very clear. How, how 
How about you? And, well, I'm not. <laughs> well, because I start up my own company and I, well, I almost put everything. Hmm. And in a company in the beginning, so that's uh, different. That's different. Yeah. You put into business, you're right. not buying something well, for yourself. Well, you know what? When I was in Canada, I was start to work, um, start to earn some money by my own, and feel very excited. I get a lot of money, and so that was. The, the family tradition is still like the same. They the are same. like old Chinese families. Well, my, my, my parents are just so traditional for that. They still said, like, I leave this to you. The reason I save this because I won't leave all of them to you. Mm. They still have oh. a, such a sense for that. But for myself, no. Well, when I was in Canada, I started working and I found everyone around me did, don't have any saving. And they have a credit card and every credit card not really pay off. So that's a different habit. So there's a lot of difference, like you compare to traditional Chinese. Mm, I thought yeah. you were saying to your parents, it's great you're leaving everything to us, but it's <laughs> just not enough, you know? <laughs> yeah, try you harder. <laughs> you got it. All right, so you don't really have uh, that, that the habit of saving much and basically... Not exactly like them. You talk to your parents about why they like to save? I think just, just the, the habit, it's just the, from the... The generation before, you know, from their parents, yeah. they, they they just have such a things to do. They they think they have to do because well, before not really rich, don't really have a lot, lot like a saving. So they have to save something, you know. Maybe maybe when 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 they get old, maybe they have to go to the hospital or everything. Mm. You know, they they feel like a safety. You know, yep. they, they yeah, feel like yeah. Insurance, yeah. Yeah, they feel secure. Your parents were born in the fifties, late fifties. Ah, fifty. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, early yeah. 50s. Right. So again, the ones born in the 50s, they yeah. are the generation who've been through all these political turmoils and all For those sure. difficult years. For sure. Yeah. And then you can imagine why they wanted yeah. to save yeah. Yeah. insurance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. So my parents, uh, they want to save, but they have nothing to save. They've been always uh, fighting with uh, making the ends meet and uh, also with uh, some family issues. So they didn't really save much at all. Uh, come to my generation, I think I've been through like uh, uh, working extremely, extremely hard, then earning money and uh, saving it. But uh, then I passed that uh, uh, period of my life. Mm. So then come to the next phase at this point of my life, I don't see saving as the best way to uh, treat money. So all the money should be in the expansion of the business to generate a much more uh, mm. profit, income and growth but uh, not into personal earnings, like uh, Cindy just said. Uh, even for the business uh, later, on, we will put all this uh, in a foundation to really helping the people for the mission that uh, I've been set up for the company. Mm. So I think it's you go through half and then you don't uh, need it. But uh, if without uh, having it, I think you will be struggling still thinking saving money as much as possible. I, people has to go through a curve. But the thing mm. is, I mean, they, there are reasons for what people do. Right? Mm. I mean, you do saving for a reason. You do not mm. do saving for a reason. Right. Like, I guess in the West, the uh, social welfare system and everything mm. is in position. If you meet a crisis and financially mm. speaking, then probably you will be supported. Yeah. If you pay mm. your monthly, I don't know, package to support yourself and then when something happens, mm -hmm. an yeah. emergency happens, yeah. you have something to go back yeah. to, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But if you are the generation who've been through all your your parents' generation, they've been through all those you difficulty know, and difficult unstable times. Unstable years, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you need that for a speaking. sense of security. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, actually, a lot of people say the social security is much more guaranteed overseas. But I've been living in U.S., New York for many years. Actually, in U.S., for the majority of the people, it's not that guaranteed. Mm -hmm. The Obama policy doesn't really cover and not anymore cover the medical uh, spending and also they don't really have a great pension for most of people of mm. course for the elites it's different but then in comparison in China even you don't have much saving or the government uh, sponsoring what you need for but you have families Mm. So in China, if my relatives, not even the parents, if they have an issue, I will help them. And it's the same, if I have an issue, they will help me. Mm. So it's the big family, it's kind of like a real uh, society security. Mm. But when it comes down to, say, luxury goods, mm. you know, all these designer brands. All and these new technology, mm. new gadgets. Exactly. Yeah. 
would you would you hesitate actually if you do really like them? Would you hesitate yeah. at spending any money on that? Yeah, go for it. Go, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you would say yeah. I would think about it. It's, go Why for not? It. Mm. Why not? Yeah. Because uh, well, for our new generation, like our generation, people don't really like uh, um, really save the money for the thing they want. They spend it first, and then they try to think about how to earn money more. All right, you so know that's a different, that, different, different thing. Totally different thing. Mm. So, I think that's better, isn't it? Because when you no, no, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Not only for you're the fashion generation. No, no, not only for the fashion or. No, I'm the moderator. So I'm not coming. <laughs> so I, I think that's a change from the from the mind. It's better yeah. to get things for the new people. Yeah. So you wouldn't if you really like it and you yeah, just go, go for, for it. it. Yeah. It's, and that's the trait like for for your generation. Right, because you you do have the such ability to earn more money if mm. you want something good. It's more about the confidence in the yeah. future. Yeah, you believe yeah, that exactly. you can make more. That's exactly. why you don't mind spending that kind of yeah. money. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's that's like a different yeah, kind of thinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like you feel more secure, actually. Yeah. With with the the bags. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have something good. All uh, right, all right. That well, that's like a new incentive to yeah. make you work even harder mm, since right. you spent that, right? Yeah. Right. You need to pay for it. Right? What a philosophy! You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a loop. Yeah. yeah. Grace, like what about you? So uh, I went through a period of time that uh, I bought all the luxuries. I used to have like 200 uh, shoes and uh, mm. uh, close 100 bags. Wow. But uh, at this point, I actually buy nothing. A little bit like uh, Cindy. It's not a 30 years watch, but it's a 15 years skirt. So I don't spend uh, anything at this point. I don't even give myself salary. So no spending and uh, no going for anything. Yeah, you bought uh, all these luxury items available at the time. So you <laughs> exactly. You, she you can spend use all the money in one year and then you need <laughs> another 20 years to use them. <laughs> <laughs> I earned them. I earned money. <laughs> the good point is, uh, when I was uh, in Switzerland, uh, when I moved back, I actually uh, leave everything away because I realized it's uh, really the the happiness rooted in simplicity. So what were the main factors at the time driving you doing all those purchases? Just out of a uh, very simple family that you never have the luxury to ah. afford. So you want to have that experience. You can afford these things. But actually, after you getting a lot of things, you realize it means actually nothing. It's no fun. So it's buying experience and not buying things. It's basically you were it's a compensation for what you didn't have when you were little. Exactly. Okay. There was a book about 10, 15 years ago called Live Rich, Die Poor. Mm. Okay. I think there's a certain truth to the difference between our last generation globally versus our generation is our last generation, to a certain extent, Chinese or non, they want to leave something, inheritance to the next generation. Mm. But I noticed that in my parents, and I really encourage them to also, to live rich, live big, mm. do not save anything, because we, to Crystal's point, we have ability to make our own money. Right. Mm. So I encourage my mom to now travel on business class, travel mm -hmm. big, just live the lifestyle, to, cause they they came they were brought up by this concept of being thrifty being frugal so they they need to push themselves they need to push the envelope to enjoy life mm -hmm. and we had already reached an agreement that by the time they pass away we don't want any of their money they can set up a foundation mm -hmm. do the or give to the cause that they want to because we can make our own money so it, it's not that I, I don't appreciate luxurious goods I do, but I am very, very selective. I actually do not genuinely pick out that many things that I genuinely like and aspire to. Mm -hmm. So I think, to me, luxury products are more on the culture. I want to be educated on the finer things in life mm -hmm. so that I know how to appreciate it, so I see the value in the money that I put in this item versus this money I could be donating mm -hmm. to this cost that I like. Mm -hmm. And so it's, to me, a learning process about the finer things in life as I move on to this, the next phase of my development. I guess you're right, I and mean, you're all right. It's all about the experience, and where can you have happiness? And basically, it's the mm. buying 
act, action, mm -hmm. or basically, what, what you want to spend the money on, and, mm -hmm. and that's where you get your mm -hmm. the largest amount of happiness. Mm -hmm. Luxurious I bags. am not, uh, well, you know, I, I, I did not have my but faith. But designer bags, they're good, right? Well, you know, <laughs> but I actually <laughs> rather spend the money on traveling, right. and seeing the world, and meeting people, Experience. and mm -hmm. eating, and doing all these things, yeah. than, than actually buying something that you're temporarily mm -hmm. happy for, for yeah. a little bit. Buying yeah. memories. Yeah, Memories. but then you know what? After the the, the trend is, has passed, you forget about the bag. And then you never forget the memories that you yeah. created along the way. Mm -hmm. Now about money management, here comes down to a very serious, mm -hmm. a tricky one. So in a relationship, and you're single, that's fine, mm -hmm. it's simple. But in a relationship, who is the uh, money manager? Who is the <laughs> finance minister? <laughs> who is in charge? Yeah, who is the one? Who is in charge? I'm curious. Do you want to go first? <laughs> well, I, I, I am married in the year, uh, last two years, mm -hmm. not really a long time ago. I still very enjoy it, like the very beginning of the yeah. marriage. Yeah. Well, but I'm, I'm 36 years old. I'm really late, actually, from the condition, I mean, the traditional, you know, culture, everything. But I think for our generation, for myself, we don't really care about, like, who is the money manager mm. or who can control others. We just don't control ourselves. Like, uh, we manage our own thing. You're still independent. Exactly, mm. very independent. So you don't have joint accounts? Or we don't do that, but mm. we contribute. <laughs> like uh, we do a, a lot of things together, and mm. eventually, well, of course, now we start up the company. We don't really have a lot, like uh, like uh, we personal the savings. Same thing. We don't really have a lot of money left. But the thing is, we can just uh, do everything together. But mm. eventually, I think that would be still the same. Oh, right. what about the parents? Your your parents? Do uh -huh. they do they? Is your oh, mom yeah, the one course. in charge? At the beginning, my mom is the charge, and. Uh, I think right now it's by my father. How come? Yeah, I think probably father thinks that they can do better than her. Oh, yeah. maybe your mom says you know, after all these years of tests, yes, I'm okay now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's the, the power. Security. Yeah. That's the power. Right. Whoever in charge of the things, you get a better power than other people. So <sighs> yeah, that's the family thing. No, no, the thing is that that's a burden basically. You have to manage the uh, the um, the wealth of the whole family. Oh, but usually, well, and that's for the family, not not yeah. for personal use, right? Then, yeah, then, but right. exactly, but you. Still have the power on hand. Well, yeah. Ah, okay. Mm. That's why you keep it independent. Oh, exactly. That's the way. <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> keep the power. Yeah. Uh, Grace. So when the time I was married, I married a Belgian, a European. So they always respect the independence. So we manage our own money. And that's separately. why we say we go Dutch, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, so we go Belgian. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Yeah. So now, of course, uh, uh, I'm on my own, so I manage myself. So that was not the reason why you separated? No. <laughs> yeah. And your parents' generation again? Uh, Mom. Your mom. It's mm. always like the mom always, yeah. who is in charge. Is that mm. how it is in Chinese mm. culture? Usually the, the, the woman in the family yeah, takes care yeah, of the money? Yeah, yeah on the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mm. mom takes care of our family money. All right, right. So again, Chinese culture influence. Yeah, mm. right. What about you, Cindy? My mom also. Yeah? Was also my grandmother. So for two generations. So it's until, you. No. <laughs> until me. <laughs> I don't do... Not inherited. I don't do family finance at all. Mm. I am so fortunate. I have a wise husband who carries the burden. Again, that's a pressure. That's burden. That is the pressure and I appreciate that, um, mm. that he does that. If we come down again to the general picture of money management in the Chinese family, maybe of this generation or say a later generation, is it common now say people stay independent after the marriage or basically there are different ways of doing this and you, know, you have a joint account, you have one, mm -hmm. you put all everything together in one account and there is one in charge. So what's the picture like now these days, say for the younger generation? Yeah, well, it's very special actually, especially in Shanghai, Beijing, because we spend a lot of money, especially for the young couple family. And when they have the first the child, they spend all of the money on it. Sometimes they, they even can, they have to borrow something from their parents or everything. Mm. So not really exactly who manage money, because everything's done. It's not enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Not done. enough it's anyway. Mm. Yeah, so we, we did, well, I, I found a lot of people around me, my, my parents, oh, I mean, my friends, everyone, 
I don't see they really manage any money right now oh. <laughs> because that's the special case. To manage yeah. money, that's one thing, but who is in charge? You have to say that's another. Yeah. Mm. But you, that's you, you uh, but first you should have some money left to manage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. You, you <laughs> manage to have some money managed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a special case for a lot of people right now in a very big city mm -hmm. in China. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's pretty. Chinese. Mm, very I mean, telling. If you if you it look is. at any pro you do TV programs, if you mm. look at some TV matchmaking TV programs, right. and sometimes the guy who came to that program to show some gesture of sincerity, mm. they would say, you know, here's my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we get into Married a relationship, me, yeah. you can be the one in charge, right. and right. I can just give everything right. to yeah. you. You're the one in charge. Right. That sounds so. So practical. So practical. <laughs> practical is a good word. It's all about money, right? It seems we're not coming down to that point where we're going to talk about relationships. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, let's take a break. <laughs> let's take a break. Think about it. Take a break. And to find out more about our show, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We'll mm -hmm. be right back. Welcome back to the studio, and now we're going to talk about something more personal, taking it <laughs> on a personal level. It seems you, were, you, you have some interest in it. No, 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 <laughs> no, I'm not sharing my personal story. I'm not talking about that, I mean, but basically this is a topic that, you know, that is to the interest of a lot of people. And mm. sometimes we do see the differences between East and the West. Mm. The Chinese culture, I mean, in, in, in Asia, Chinese and Indians, that we're also different, right? Mm. But again, if you talk about the Chinese family, say, let's, okay, we touched upon it a little bit before the break. Mm. It's more about, you know, how you're going to find the other one. Mm. You're saying you use the word practical. Mm. <laughs> so is that the, uh, the impression you, you get a lot with Chinese marriages? Sure. Hmm? Mm. Sure. It, you, have to, you have to eat, right? You yeah. have to have a so roof what, under what, your head. What do you right? look for? What kind of characteristics do you look for? Mm. You know, when you're looking for a partner. Bank account. <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, um, I was talking in general terms yeah. about mm. friends and family around me being Chinese. Yeah. But for me, because I married young, I married when I just got out of college. At wow. that point, you really... Yeah. Practicality is not even part of your world. Whatever they say. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I followed my heart. I yeah. married my true love. Mm. And we're still married 22 years mm. after that. So. What was the uh, picture like in, in Taiwan, say, at the time? Uh, were they also doing things like, you know, okay, I have a uh, stable job, uh, my monthly salary was like this, and I, I'm... It's not you know, like an ad that you see on newspapers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, could, what what can you do? My horoscope. Yeah, mm -hmm. what, what can you do on, on the newspaper? You have a little column like, like you this, and you have to state on it, right? all the facts in there. Yeah. But was it like this, too, in, in Taiwan at the sure. time? Sure. Certain, to a certain extent. Um, there's a Chinese term called mendang hu dui. Yeah. Family mm. and family needs to have come from similar social status. Yeah, that's what they call matchmaking. You have to match, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. And so there are a lot to it. And then to Taiwanese families at the time, it is expected for the son's family to provide housing All right. for the bride. And it is expected for the son's family to put forth a banquet mm. for the wedding. Um, and it, everything is about face. And so if yeah. your daughter can be married to the right husband, those are supposed to be given. All right. Mm. So what about the bright side then? Well, the bright side will have uh, what we call um, ping li. Mm -hmm. right? So the bright side would have either gifts or cash mm. or jewelry to bring along. It's still very traditional. Yeah. Mm. I don't think I'm the typical case, like compared to other people around mm -hmm. me. Like, because I am way too late to get married. Like, last year I'm on my 35. Okay, that's the yeah. average marriage level. I think age 30, would be 30, 20, 30, 20, 30, 20 okay, around. in the cities. I think later. Could be even then. early in the countryside. Now, mm -hmm. before I, 30, I feel like, right? I believe yeah. so. Mm -hmm. That's a that safe age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, before 30, everybody talks to you about mm -hmm. this. They, yeah. they feel like it's very. Still these days? I, I think so. Family is only Everything. your friends, too. Yeah. Friends, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. whoever 
well, if, if they really um, care about you, they, they really talk to you about this. They're showing how much they care about you. <laughs> exactly. They want to introduce people. Exactly. exactly. Oh, yeah, they do, but they cannot find but it. But not happening, say, in Canada or in, in America. I think so. it's no. fine. And no, no one really talks it's about it. It's almost taboo yeah. in America. Yeah. Yeah. It's my personal thing. Why, okay. why are you... Yeah, yeah, why yeah that's the cultural right. difference, right. I guess. Yeah. So, for, for myself, well, of course, I think I'm married to the best guy and best of family. Mm. But before I really... Decide, decide to marry to him. I did not pick up the conditions. No from conditions. Him. No. So I, I don't think I'm the typical. But a lot of people around me, I think, they pick up a lot of things like housing. Of course, in Beijing, Shanghai, if you don't have any house apartment, it'll be like a big issue. Mm. Or um, like a, like a mandan who do like you mm. said. So just still think about that very hard. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. So conditions are still financial conditions. I believe. I believe they're are still very important. Yeah, check yes. Mm. Right. But at yeah. the same time, on the basis, on the mm -hmm. foundation of mm -hmm. they, they love each other, they like each other. Well, that's why you can find a lot of people after two or three years only, and they, they get divorced. Are we talking about different generations, with the younger generation? I think it's or about my generation, like the 80s. Or, 80s. Yeah, to and 90s, I think, about the, these years. Like, that tends like to be more way. practical. Mm. Still very practical. Still very practical. Right, right. Grace? So my, for my generation, all the uh, female girlfriends, we talked about uh, that we would uh, get married once before we 30. Mm. Uh -huh. So we all got married, uh, some marriage sustains, uh, some like me end up divorced. So personally for myself, I think I married um, uh, to having a different life. So I married a foreigner which can completely different with the, my parents' life. Um, but it turns out uh, it's uh, nothing to do with condition. It's a lot to do with your uh, value system. Mm. So then that end up uh, in a different story. But uh, still, I believe for the 70s, uh, the people in my uh, friends' circle, most women are pretty strong. Strong so, in yeah, in strong in terms of their career, their so economic uh, Being independent, experience. financially speaking. Exactly. Yeah. So I think a lot of them still married out of either they want to having a different lifestyle mm. or they want to, in a different way, upgrade their life experience. Right. So not purely on the economic side. Not always on conditions. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay. That's like, you know, when you get mature, you realize what you mm. want. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you are also in a position to ignore all the caring comments, right? <laughs> Basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to think about that because you know what you want. Mm -hmm. I know you don't want to reveal your personal stories, but again... <laughs> no, I can, I can. To what extent do you get to decide who to marry, uh, what kind of guy you're looking for? Are you also kind of influenced by your parents? Not really. My parents are quite open-minded, yeah. so um, they actually don't have that very little say who I, who I date, who I'm in a relationship mm. with. Um, for me, it's about getting along because I think you need to get along with someone for the rest of your life. Personality. Personality, I think. And values. And personality, mm. values, yeah. and the way you think, and you have to be able to be open-minded, mm. be able to want to learn new things, being yeah. curious. I think yeah. personality, for me, is the most important Absolutely thing. Absolutely important. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I mean, the Chinese culture, because once again, mm. we're talking about, you know, China is like a huge family that's mm. been consisted of all these small families. Mm. So in the family, we have the extended, the concept of extended family. Mm. So <coughs> your parents' generation, your grandparents' generation, they would all try to show mm. their caring the thoughts, right? right? And they mm. want to impose their influence to some extent mm. on you on who is the right guy mm. for you and sometimes they get really stubborn. Mm. So how much influence do you get from your parents or do you get to decide for yourself at all? I wasn't influenced by my parents on who I married all that much but to Grace's earlier point, whether we are conscious or subconscious, yeah, maybe it's, it's already, already in your head. Or it's already yeah. in our head. That's a good point. Mm. So I still feel I, I chose a, a husband that I feel would be easily immersed into our family. And your parents would mm. like, right? Yeah, yeah. My, yeah. my parents. When you think about your parents when you, like, when you look at this guy, you always say, oh, my parents would like him. You, mm. and yeah, it'll, it'll be natural. Right? It'll be the same yeah. pattern. It's, it's <laughs> like you can choose anyone you like. <laughs> Exactly. But, but <laughs> yeah. although my parents did not like my husband at the beginning. All right. And then they grew to love him. All right. 
So what's the situation well, like, Crystal? I love to share like a from different way to think about that. Because I'm very lucky. Because the very first I met, my parents already really like my husband. So it means like. So they chose him for you. Exactly. If mm. I don't want to marry him. They don't want me. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's a lot of that families like that. Problem yeah. solved. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. So they, they think they found some very good guy, and they want you to keep the relationship with him until you guys get married. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they will force you. Mm. So, so did the parents introduce him to you? No, oh, okay. it's just a very like him. But would they offer them, say, you know, when you were younger, it was like, you know, I, I like you know, if it is your future <laughs> husband is like this, well, or like that guy, <laughs> it will be, you know. I did not give my parents this chance because I. <laughs> <laughs> you got away <laughs> to Canada yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah, I left. And meanwhile, um, I did not really show any, girl, uh, any boyfriends, potentially the guys there. Mm. So they did not get a chance to, to give any. Opinion on feedback. it. Feedback. <laughs> exactly. Feedback or opinion on it. But mm. yes, you're right. They will give if they, they think it's right. Mm. And yeah. they think this is their obligation exactly. actually, to offer you opinion. And that they yeah. believe they are right. And they always say this yeah. is for your good. Yeah. <laughs> for right. you. Sure. Right. Yeah. Because in Chinese Valley, you're not just marrying that person. You're marrying into the family. 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 Yeah. Mm. And so, um, just to give you a little bit more personal flair to this, when my husband and I were dating, my husband would always invite my mom to be on our dates. Oh. Uh. He knew uh, that he wasn't clever. on my mom's favorite oh, yeah. side yeah. yet. He's playing the right tactic. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right, right? It, works. it totally works. And he would spend hours to to uh, uh, chat with my grandmothers. Oh, right. even grandmothers. Uh, uh, he knew that it was women who right. can have the oh. final say right. in, wow. in the family. Exactly. And therefore, he, my husband has been working on my daughter mm. by saying that, you remember, young lady, when in the future, when you have a boyfriend, Make sure you invite mom and dad to sit right in the middle <laughs> in the movie theaters between you and your boyfriend, okay? Whoa. And my, my girl would say, yes, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know what she's thinking, actually, inside yeah. her heart, right? You never know. You never know. That's the generation gap. Mm -hmm. So what about, what about you, Grace? So, of course, as every Chinese traditional family, my parents tried to influence me, let me to get married with a rich, well-established Chinese man. But then I decided to marry a foreigner. But actually, before I got married, we lived together for three years. My parents think that's the shame in their life. Living together without a certificate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So then when the time I got, um, the very beginning, they dislike a foreigner, but then they most dislike the fact that I live with a foreigner without marriage. Mm. So they've been pushing me to get married and also my ex-husband. But then when we get married, my parents actually like him more and more since it's already <laughs> son. But then when they divorced him, my parents got really Really upset. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Yeah, awkward. Yeah. Yeah. They think that divorcing is even more uh, shameful than you marry the foreigner or you live with a foreigner without marriage. But uh, anyhow, I did uh, it all. It's mm -hmm. it's so it's it's a decision purely made by you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who you like to marry? Yes, to and uh, the time I need a divorce, and uh, the time I want to live uh, by myself. Did, so you, even, this is, uh, did yeah. you even consult them? Actually, I just told Cindy after uh, we lived the three years uh, together. Uh, my ex-husband always uh, kind of enforced that we should get married, and uh, eventually I was being pushed. So we registered, but I didn't tell my parents. So your so husband was. Of time. He's more Chinese than you. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, he's more traditional European. Right. Which family yeah. value is uh, very right. important mm. for so them. In other words, sometimes we might have a misconception about mm. what it's like in exactly. the West. And sometimes the basic values are the same. I actually exactly. see more similarities between European cultures and the Chinese cultures. Mm. I, I do see a lot more differences between U.S. culture and, the, mm. and Chinese yeah. culture. Mm. All right, all right. Mm. Now let's move on, since you got married, and then let's talk about kids. <laughs> Again, in China, yeah. we have this one-child policy, mm -hmm. and these days we're now seeing more couples uh, who decide not to have any child, mm. or with the policy now you're allowed you to have, have the two, second. Two kids, a lot yeah. actually yeah. they choose to have a second child. Mm. So, what is I mean, what is your thinking, Ju? Because with the Again, with the tradition, we tend to have children, the more the merrier, with the Chinese family, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
what is the situation like? You know, uh, Crystal, you're the youngest. You go first. <laughs> well, I don't have any child yet. Yeah. But I'm going to have two, I think, at two. least. <laughs> I really think we will have some two. Why, why two? Why do you think well, two is a good you know, number? Well, you know, one is just so... Uh, I, I don't think one, poli uh, one child policy is right. Especially for now, mm. when I get age, when I, when when I have to take care of my parents, mm. my husband has to take care of uh, his parents. We got four, um, yeah, and to take care. And we think about it, how can we get together eventually? Now we are in Beijing, and my parents in Dandong, and his parents in another city. Mm. So we think about how to get together. Mm. So that's not really the right thing to do. It's mm. really big responsibility. Mm. So, so out of one, practical reasons? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one is not the right thing. And two, maybe not good enough, but at least better than one. Mm. <laughs> well, like if you, you know, yeah, exactly. If allowed, you would like well, to have. Exactly. I, I can have more. I really have to. I, I, I really want to because the bigger family, you get a, like a very different things where every mm. day you have a lot possible opportunity with the other environment mm. and you can send over your children to everywhere if they like to. <laughs> it's a lot of parents. I mean, a lot of Mary, a lot you know, happy things happened mm. in the It's future. because you don't have a child now <laughs> yet. <I don't> <laughs> so Cindy, share some experience. <laughs> <laughs> two is enough. <laughs> more than two handful. <laughs> well, you know, that's, a, that's a very different because a lot of my friends in Canada right now is about my age. They have three children. Okay. They still, you know, live happily like with the whole family. I'm not sure, but I look <laughs> like a <laughs> really happy. So, but in China, exactly, if you only have one or two children, it's a lot, like already enough. Like but again. What I'm saying is, again, these days, it's just possible. It's not like an obligation that you right. have to have a child. Right. But these days, it's all these options are open yeah. now to the couples, yeah. right? Whether you, now, you, you yeah. decide to have one or you decide not to have any right. children. Right. It's all acceptable right. by the families, by the parents. But what about the, you know, if you decide not to have any children, then, then what about your parents? Would they be well, okay I, with it? No, that was so disappointed. Mm. It's so sad. Yeah, the really Boys and girls? Oh, that, that's fine. That's fine. That's totally okay. That's not like they no, like to have boys. No, my parents not, right. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that, you know, yeah. we're seeing the development. Yeah. Ended, yeah. Right? Feel better, actually. If you really have to bore a boy and you have a boy that you don't know, right? Yeah. Yeah. So no child is okay, acceptable. Uh, right. In my case, it is. But I have to say that, of course, ideally, every parent, they hope uh, their children follow the same path. And um, I love children very much. So back to what you say, culture difference. I see a lot of Dutch family. They have three because uh, they are very economic thinking. By one big car, five <laughs> people sitting, just right. <laughs> <laughs> economy of scale. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think that's using the car. That's what the it really car. depends on how you see some of my U.S. friends, like Mormon family, they have six kids, yeah. which is oh. also pretty common. And then you have the uh, other friends that they don't want to have children. So in my view, everybody is different. Just mm -hmm. find the uh, right numbers, either have or haven't, yeah. suitable for you. Yeah. In my own case, because uh, that I love children, I love all the children, but personally I decided to do not have children. Mm. So in that case, of course, it's not ideal for my parents. My ex-husband, he really wants to have families, children. So by the time, I also said, if this is what you want, that's not what I want. So it's wow. much better go for a complete family in your definition. So in my happiness of a family, as long as you find a path and a lifestyle which is good for you, either have or haven't. Mm. So w what you're saying is Chinese women of that generation or with the younger generation, they're not in a position to seek a lifestyle that suits mm. them mm. instead of being influenced by other external factors. Yeah. Not from the parents, yeah. not from your, the other half, but it's, it's your decision, yeah. your choice. Yeah. And this is not only your, your case. But uh, what I, 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 it's my case, but I also think it makes sense for everybody to choose what is really suitable for their own happiness. But it is, ha is it happening? It is happening. It's mm. a lot of, actually, one thing realize here, people just assume you're supposed to get married. But actually, 
that uh, we see a lot of people, no matter in China, in U.S., they choose not to get married, and mm. they're still pretty happy. As long as you find uh, what makes you happy, maybe it's uh, a lifestyle, maybe it's your career, or maybe it's your hobby, maybe it's your partner, your family, your children, and they just live up to it. But the, um, mm. also at the same time, the divorce rate is getting higher, yeah. mm. Very especially high. in big cities. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. Nearly 30-something, 39? I think uh, they say yeah. like a 50%. 50%? In certain, yeah. Wow. It's okay. a little bit like U.S. U.S. average also pretty And do you high. think it's because women's uh, thinking are changing? Is, do you think that's why? So, uh, do you think it's if you, uh, from uh, my experience, I think it's uh, really uh, because a woman knows much better what's love, what's not. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also mm -hmm. have the right to decide that they wouldn't live a life without uh, love, or without uh, just uh, being practical thinking. And you think that is important? I think the divorce, if I may say, mostly out of the decision of the woman. Mm. If the woman decides, I want to divorce, then they divorce. So the rate is higher. It's because a lot of women finally they decide they want to get a divorce. Wait, and Grace, what I'm saying is, is it only your personal case, or do you think no, that I, is a case a that represents the generation? Yeah. U U.S. and China, all across the world, mm. I think that's uh, what's happening. So I have a lot of friends who decided to divorce, too. Mm. For for seeking a, a different for lifestyle? seeking their own happiness. Mm -hmm. And I was actually advised by my friends to get divorced <laughs> many times. What a friend! <laughs> <laughs> no, because they loved me. They, they knew the struggle, <laughs> the challenges that my husband and I went through. Mm. And I chose to, or I say I, in this case, chose to stay in the marriage. Mm. It's also because mm. of my personal um, decision. So I, I think our generation is blessed with the option mm. to, to choose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm. I think that's key to finally, eventually, finding mm. our own happiness. As we're now coming to the end of our discussion, what would be your observation of this, again, this generation? Um, I agree with all, all, all you guys said about, mm. you know, being free, being independent. But at the same time, you're going for what you want, mm. but at the same time, you also have those traditional values mm. in your head. So while you're chasing your dreams, you also feel, you're also grounded at the same time. So you don't, you're not really doing everything and not caring about anything, all the other consequences that come with it. I mean, if you call this a Generation X, do you think this generation is much different from any other generation at all? I can't really compare to, I mean, I, I feel like I can compare it to the next generation, the, the younger mm. generation. I think it's quite different. Mm. I think the younger generation, I feel like they go for what they want and they, maybe they don't think about it's more like living by the day. Mm. Mm. So I think more it's slightly different, yeah. So more differences or more similarities compared to the same generation of a different region, different country, or mm. different generations of the same, gener uh, same culture? Being an um, overseas Taiwanese, American Chinese, <laughs> being in China right now, I feel China today and the people who are growing up on this land takes a lot of similarities when I was growing up in Taiwan mm. because once again the economy is booming mm. the country is opening up opportunities are plenty nothing is impossible those are all the things that I was familiar with yeah. when I was growing up so mm. I do see a lot of similarities in this way mm. yeah. but other than this I, I hesitate to make too, too much generalization mm. Mm. Well, yeah, we see a lot of difference right now, especially for a lot of younger people now. We hire some people already like a born from 1996, so only 22 or 23 years old. They're very different. But I think the core value in China is still very similar because mm. block links everything in China. Because if you are from one family, everything should be very related. So even you are born from 2000 or 2015, whatever, but you still from this family, from this culture. So everything will be related, not really exactly changed. But the core value is still the same, I think. Well, I can tell when I return back to China after 10 years, well, a lot of things change, the buildings, everything's changed, but people not really change a lot. Mm. Yeah. So we may take different forms, but the basic values are I agree still with there. It. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, well, yeah. we have to believe the power of culture sometimes, mm. right. yeah. believe it or not. Uh, so, in the end, we may say, feel it, no, go for it if you feel it.
That's what we're looking for, right? Exactly. Experience and your happiness, your inner happiness, inner peace is the most yeah. important thing. Yeah. Indeed. Right on. All right. Indeed. Okay. Once again, thank you very much, ladies. Thank you very much. For your time. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. And thank you for your sharing. We didn't get much of your story. It's all ladies. Yeah. <laughs> ladies edition. And thank you for watching this episode of Crossover. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.